instrument for the, the target metals. So as you can see, they took these points and they started increasing the pH. So they're moving here to the, to the right. And you can see certain metals, um, aluminum starts dropping out here, the blue line. You know, pH 5, it was basically all gone, 5, 5 and a half. Then you got manganese, it gradually starts dropping until you got a pH about 7, and then it really dropped off. Uh, and then you got um, iron, that was really low in this water, so it, uh, it didn't take much to drop that out. Um, the important thing is to know to see how the acidity um, here actually went up as this was occurring. So we were actually generating acidity as we were trying to neutralize it. That's an important thing to take note because um, what happens is when you precipitate these metals to get them out of solution because they're dissolved, they create acidity when that happens. And right here, this is basically a, a stoichiometric ratio of for every milligram per liter of each metal, how much acidity is given off when that metal is precipitated. So when it's, when it's dissolved, it's not giving off any per se acidity. Um, but what it does is when it gets precipitated, once you add that chemical, now you have this much acidity to deal with uh, for that specific material. So as we're precipitating all these, as this graph is showing, we're generating this acidity. Um, so it's pretty unique in how uh, you have to understand that to adequately figure out how you're going to treat this water. This is a little bit of a busy uh, slide, but it, it's, it's real important, and that is, is it really tells you in the concept of chemistry and engineering how you're going to proceed in treating the water. Uh, and that's because there's a risk involved, um, and specifically in regards to a form of treatment called passive treatment. Passive is basically where you uh, put a natural mechanism, say limestone, and you allow that to basically treat your water without somebody being present to drip a chemical or add something constantly to the water. It's just constantly neutralizing the, the acid in the water without anybody being there. They build a pond, they put limestone in it, and, and done. However, there's a risk involved. The worse the water quality is, sorry, water, the worse the water quality is, and that's what this is showing, as you get to the red, as you get increasing concentrations of iron and, and aluminum and you get higher flows, as you get what are, what's called higher loading, your risk becomes greater, okay? And you start leaning towards what's called chemical treatment or active treatment. As your metal concentrations or loading is low, then you can do more of this passive treatment, which is, again, using like a limestone or wetland type of uh, system, and we'll get into that later. But that's really what these are summarizing is you gotta work with the chemistry. Um, you know, you, you stick with uh, what can work and what doesn't require a lot of maintenance. Uh, you know, you don't have to monitor as regularly. If, if, you, if you fit this bill, you, you basically will make life a lot easier and you uh, improve the uh, success of the treatment system. So as I said, acidity uh, is the main thing uh, of focus when you're looking at mine water treatment, typically. Um, and um, for those of you, you know, that these are, could be some new terms. Um, net acidity uh, is basically, well, I should say acidity really as a definition is how much alkaline material is needed to neutralize the acidity in the water. So you're basically trying to find out how much alkaline do you gotta add to get rid of any acidity in that water. Now net acidity refers to specific components of acidity. It's, it gets a little deep, but I'll try to just touch the base so we don't get too deep into the uh, uh, things, and I really don't hit a lot of equations other than a couple. So, um, but net acidity is equal to calculated acidity minus the alkalinity that's in the water. Um, now, calculated acidity, um, well actually I should say net acidity, um, there's a synonymous term called hot acidity, which you can get done in the laboratory. You can actually take a sample to a lab, and they will, calculate, they will uh, test it for hot acidity. And that ends up being pretty synonymous to the term net acidity. But there's a way to actually calculate it too, um, based on knowing these few things. And that is, um, calculated acidity is equal to pH acidity plus metal acidity. So if we know, this is a little um, calculator that's in a software called AMD Treat, and I'll get into that in a little bit. 
but this is a little calculator that you can use to calculate the acidity. All you have to know is a few of these parameters of your water that you're looking at. And basically, you have to know the pH, you know, take a pH meter, measure the pH of the water in the field, and then you also send this uh, sample of the water off to the lab to find out what the concentrations of the different irons are. Uh, and typically in um, Pennsylvania, we focus on aluminum, manganese, ferric and ferrous iron, and that's about it. Uh, we really don't worry too much, depends, usually don't worry too much about zinc, copper, nickel because the concentrations of those tend to be low and they're not of much concern. These are the, the ones that really uh, end up being high and we have to worry about trying to treat so those don't go into the streams. But uh, once you know the pH and these metal concentrations, you enter them in here, and this actually will come down and calculate the acidity, or the pH acidity, which is how much is created just from the pH. As you can see, uh, the pH of 3.5 gives us that much. And then these concentrations of metals gives us this much metal acidity. And then what it does is it adds up that total acidity, and that gives us this value here. Calculated the acidity. There's one here that's not activated right here, and it's called carbon acidity. And the reason that is is because there is no alkalinity in this water right now. So very little, it's 0.1. So if there was alkalinity in this water, then this would actually be active and, and it would calculate that part of it. Um, but that gets into the, the carbon dioxide cycle and kind of the carbon dioxide species that are in the water. Uh, and I'm going to touch on that just a little bit. Just enough so you kind of understand of why that is an important thing to also consider when treating mine water is the carbon and acidity. And that's what I'm going to touch on first. Um, this is a picture, um, I don't know if any of you ever heard of, this is the St. Michael Treatment Plant, which is actually in Johnstown, PA. So this is a massive uh, mine water treatment plant, probably one of the biggest ones in the state. Uh, it treats, uh, I forget the flow of water, it's a lot of water. Um, but uh, a mining company built this uh, because they're doing some adjacent mining and as a result of an agreement with the state, they agreed to treat a mine pool in the area for such a certain period of time. And they built this massive, I want to say it's somewhere between around $15 million uh, to build this treatment plant. But what this picture is, these are called Maelstrom oxidizers. These basically, uh, the water is run through these and these, I don't know if you can see, there's kind of a foamy, there's white right here, and that's the water being agitated uh, by these little um, things where compressed air is fed into them. And basically what that does, you can see the kind of the, the haze or the mist above it. Now, granted, it was cold. Um, but that's, that's uh, gas coming off of the air, strong aeration of this water, some of which is carbon dioxide. Um, in this type of a situation, we want to actually get rid of the carbon dioxide, which is why they're doing this. Uh, they're treating the water with a product called hydrated lime. What they're trying to do is they're trying to bring the water out of the mine, aerate it to get rid of the carbon dioxide, which gets rid of that carbon acidity that I mentioned. And now they're going to add the hydrated lime, which strictly just treats for those other two forms of acidity, pH and metal acidity. And that's, what, that's all, when you're doing this kind of a treatment, that's all you want your, your chemical to go towards. Now, in the next slide, carbon acidity can be a good thing. This is a passive treatment system. That last one was called active. This is a big limestone bed. Um, so it's just a pond created. They filled it with limestone. But here, carbon dioxide is actually a good thing. Because what happens is carbon dioxide actually helps limestone dissolve. Okay? It actually promotes dissolving this, carbon, this uh, limestone, which in turn, neutralizes the acidity in the water and increases the pH. And that's really, I mean, so in that situation, it's not good to off-gas the carbon dioxide like I, like I did in that last slide. So again, it, it's important to know what you're, how you're going to treat the water so that you can approach it in the best manner possible and most efficient. Um, just to touch on the metals acidity, um, again, I tried not to make it too heavy in the, chemical, in the equations, but uh, um, again, it's one, probably the main component of calculated acidity. Uh, and like I said on that first slide with the graph, um, each metal contributes 
acidity when it's, when it's precipitated. And what happens, so here you got your dissolved form, and as we send the equation this way, we get the solid form. So we precipitated it by adding an alkaline chemical or limestone. This is the problem right here. Okay, that's the hydrogen ion, which is the form of acidity that we're creating when we precipitate it. That's going off in the water once this, uh, this material is precipitated, and we, change, we create that, which actually wants to drive the pH back down. So you're actually fighting a battle, which is part of the whole uh, process of, of treating mine water. And this just shows how that happens for each metal. Again, the main ones for the water in our region are aluminum, Fe3+, which is ferric iron, Fe2+, which is ferrous iron, and manganese. Um, the, the hydraulic, as I said, the hydrolysis, hydrolysis, excuse me, which is where you're adding the water is forming with the dissolved metal, or the oxidation, which is where we're adding oxygen. We're, ox we're oxidizing the metal and forming a precipitate that then comes out of the water. So bottom line is you must generate or contain enough alkalinity in the water through treatment to offset how much acidity is already in it and how much is created by the metals once they precipitate. And this is that same exact little acidity calculator. Um, and you can see how you know these all contribute to the metal acidity that these hydrogen ions form once they're precipitated. And that's what this is calculating for you right here. So actually there's software out there that can you can go through this and figure this out up front before you even tre uh, design your treatment system. So I've used this software probably more than just about anybody uh, for designing treatment and evaluating treatment. So it's uh, it's a very powerful tool. And I'll, I'll get into it too because the agency I work for actually created this software. And it's free. Um, aluminum chemistry. So I'm just going to touch real quick on the... Uh, the three metals that I said are most important, aluminum, iron, and manganese. Um, aluminum chemistry is actually the simplest of the three. Bottom line is all you have to do is raise pH and aluminum will come out of the water. Uh, the preferential pH is about six and a half. Once you hit pH of six and a half, aluminum basically does not want to be dissolved in the water at all. That is its what's called its minimum solubility. Um, it doesn't matter how much oxygen is in the water, that plays no role. All aluminum is concerned about is the pH of the water. So when we're designing a system to deal with aluminum, bottom line is all we want to do is raise the pH to at least six or six and a half, and we're going to have a concentration below, right here, one milligram per liter uh, of dissolved. So that is the typical goal for a treatment system uh, where aluminum is involved. Um, so and it's very quick, it's a very quick reaction. Iron is not so easy. Uh, iron makes things a lot more complicated uh, for many reasons.